Hey, young people. Well, so I didn't really want to get in a whole bunch of time on what the cops stopped for, whether it was a lawful stop, what they were arresting, whatever. This is just, I talk about our laws are based on voluntary compliance. And once the citizens decide not to voluntarily comply, our government loses. Which is why government wants them only to have guns, because it gives them a huge advantage. If the people decide not to voluntarily comply with tyranny, then they have the guns and they can just start shooting people and they'll stop any pushback. But, you know, they won't tell you that. They, they, they want, government wants the guns to protect you, to help you. It's because they care. It's because they're so good at protecting you and doing so much great with the money they steal in taxes each year that they give to other countries and have open borders and don't secure the borders and don't prosecute crimes and want to make everything legal and want to take more from working people and give more to non-working people. So this is the case, basically, in a lot of neighborhoods where the rule of law just doesn't apply. And most of you have seen it. Let's take a look at it. I muted it because it's just, all right, I'll let you hear the annoying. Well, actually, I slowed it down, so I'll play it at full speed. Cops on a traffic stop. The neighborhood turns on and starts throwing water on them. Splash, splash, hit them in the head with a ball, squirting them. More water. Okay, so let's mute this, and we're going to slow it down. And I'll kind of get into why the cop, what he can do and what he can't do and why. So I think right about here is when the first water comes. So if a cop is out here, is this cop bald? I think it'll beat up a whole neighborhood. Anyway, this cop here is arresting this guy. So, and he's driving in a car. And according to the traffic stop, the way it looks like the car pulled over, there's probably other stuff going on. But regardless of why he's arresting this guy, he's putting a guy in cuffs. What's he supposed to do when 10, 20, 15 people start throwing things at him? He can abandon this guy. He can grab this guy, throw him in a car and get to safety. He can get on his radio, call for backup, which he probably already did. Uh, there's not a whole bunch he can do. He can abandon this guy and go after the first guy that threw water on him, chase him down. And then when he tries to arrest him, the crowd will come around, throw water and do it. And then he can let him go and go chase so there's not a lot of good answers in here. I've always heard about, I can't believe the cops let people get away with that. I can't believe the cops just run out of a neighborhood. Other people will be like, the cops deserve it. Um, you know what? I think we need bad guys getting removed. That's Government takes our taxes and tells us they'll keep us safe. They ought to spend that money on removing bad guys. So normal citizens that go to work, pay taxes, and want to raise their kids right, doesn't have to deal with the uh, diversity is our strength people. So, uh, you know, look, he gets assaulted. That's a battery. You throw something off, that's a battery. That's an arrestable offense. This guy can be arrested and goes to jail. Guess what? He doesn't. And they know that when they get in groups. This guy across here, throwing water. That's battery if you throw any fluid. How do we know this isn't gasoline? How do we know they didn't put poison? How do we know there's not ammonia in there? We don't. I mean, that makes it a more serious battery, but it's still, even if it's water, it's battery. I mean, if you shoot somebody with a spitball, that's battery. So he's assaulted here, guy threw a ball, hit him in the head, that's battery. Okay? Anytime you make contact with somebody, it's battery. Either with your fist or with other objects. So, um, what, what's this guy to do? I mean, there's not a whole bunch you can do. And just so you know... When neighborhoods like this, I just did a, a case on the Supreme Court, uh, Utah versus Street or Strike. Um, and, and the justices kept saying, well, what about the poor neighborhoods where 80% of the people have warrants? I'm like, what neighborhoods are those? What neighborhood does 80% of the people have a warrant? Well, those would be your liberally run high gun control, lots of government, lots of police, lots of taxes, uh, running out good people and, uh, lots of jails, lots of police showing up to calls, getting arrested, and lots of broke governments telling you we need more money so we can keep you safe. Those are the neighborhoods that the Supreme Court, not me, 
said that it's not fair that cops should be running people for warrants because 80% of the people have warrants. And uh, it's an incentive for cops to run people for warrants because they're probably going to get a hit. That's a Supreme Court justice saying this. And then when I say something, YouTube is banning and blocking me saying, oh, that doesn't fit our community standards. That's stereotyping. Oh, you're grouping people together. You can't do that. Well, guess what? The Supreme Court did it not once, but several times in that case. And I'll put a link in the description in case you missed it. But uh, anyway, uh, look, cop can only do so much. He's getting hit in the head. He's getting assaulted. He's outnumbered. Uh, somebody's going to say, why didn't he tase or shoot? Look, deadly force isn't authorized because somebody throws water on you. You can't shoot him. Now, how could this turn into deadly force? If this cop, people started throwing balls, and then they started throwing rocks, and then they started throwing bricks. Now we're moving into actions that can cause serious bodily injury and or death. Unless you have that, deadly force isn't authorized. Now this officer can use reasonable force to defend himself. Can he hit them? Can he push them off? Can he grab them and throw them on the ground and arrest them? Yes. All that would be reasonable because he's being battered. But the cop says, you know what? I know where I'm at. I expect it. It happens every time. Let me get my arrestee in custody and I'll move on. And I'll wait for backup. And as soon as a couple of other cars go up, all these people will be scattering like roaches and they'll be running off and hiding. And then they'll arrest this dude and then they'll get in their cars and leave. Somebody say, they should get video. Why aren't these people arrested? You don't understand what it's like working as a cop when this happens all the time. You can't arrest everybody. Like I said, when I was a cop, I let 10 times more people go that I could have arrested than I actually arrested. So for every arrest I made, there was 10 arrests I could have made and I just let go. Probably a lot higher than that. But I'm just talking about what I would consider a good arrest. You know, where there's a warrant or something needs to be arrested. I'm not talking about freaking CHP, you know, writing somebody because they, they got something hanging from their mirror or their tail light flickered. Um, anyway, um, Take it for what it's worth. I'm just trying to give you a cop's perspective here. You can only do so much. Cop was outnumbered. He was being battered. Yeah, he can't react. He can't chase him. Uh, he has to stay focused. He gets the guy, which he considers. I'm assuming this guy has a more serious crime than battery. If this guy, if he was arresting him for, you know, a CHP littering ticket, then he would probably abandon this guy and go after the guy that battered him because that's a more serious offense. So the fact that he's ignoring all this, I'm thinking this guy's more serious, but could be, I, I don't know. All right, we'll end that there.